All right, take two. <laughs> Hello, everybody. My name is Amelia. I am the CEO and founder of the Flourishing Center. We are gathered for a connection to learn how to take care of your body. Um, I am going to teach you the principles of something called yoga tune-up which is something I learned from my teacher, Jill Miller, who's the creator of Yoga Tune Up. And every, a lot of what I'm gonna teach you comes from this book that's called The Role Model. Um, and I think of this book right here as the absolute Bible of self-care. And I'm gonna tell you how to, I'm gonna teach you to over the course of this hour that we have together, how to take care of your own connective tissue. So I'm asking people that are coming in to let me know what type of material you have for massaging yourself. Um, I have a range of toys that I'm going to just very quickly, uh, I'm gonna introduce you to, and um, I'm gonna use some, I'm gonna describe others, but primarily what we're gonna be working with is a ball. So I have something called yoga tune-up balls over here. These are my favorite to use because they're not too hard, they're not too soft, and the consistency of them works really well on skin because it basically, it, it presses well into skin. But tennis balls work really great. Um, there are also different types of balls that you can use that are a little bit harder. Um, yoga tune-up has lots of different size balls and I'm only really gonna show you them a little bit, but just to give you an idea, there's bigger balls that are a little bit harder and there's something like this, which is a, a ball for massaging your abdomen. Um, so primarily we're gonna be working with just a ball. If you don't have a ball, you can use a can as well. And I'm gonna show you how you can roll your body on different surfaces, or I hope everyone's taking their vitamins. So if you're not, you, um, when you're, um, if hopefully you are, so you can even use a vitamin can. I've seen some people use wine bottles to roll out their IT bands and other things like that. I don't drink, so I don't happen to have a wine bottle around, but get creative. You basically need a surface for your body to push against. We have a small enough group that if you put your camera on, I'll be better able to cue you through what it is that we're doing. So I'm gonna ask you to that if you can, please put your camera on. Um, but if you're gonna be moving around a lot like Dr. B is, I'm gonna say, Kelly, pause, turn the camera once you're settled. Um, so, and also please grab, if you don't already have a pencil or something that is small like a pen that you're gonna do self-care strategies through this as well. Let me take a moment to explain to you guys uh, the why behind taking care of our connective tissue and a little bit more about me and what I do. So at the Flourishing Center, we have training programs for practitioners that want to apply the science of positive psychology and mind-body medicine into their life. And we integrate strategies for taking care of soft tissue and connective tissue as part of our vitality module for our training programs because we know that there are many pathways to well-being and somebody has graciously decided to share their screen and I'm going to stop that, sorry. Um, and we look at how to support human flourishing. And we know that humans flourish through different pathways and we want, and this comes from an increase to our positivity, a sense of engagement, having high quality connections, having meaning that this person's trying to record and you can't record, I'm sorry. Um, whoever that is, please, uh, Adrian, please stop trying to record this call. I am recording it for you. Um, and you are uh, hopping on, on everybody's screen when you do that. Good, good try, though. I appreciate you being resourceful. Um, so I said we need really positive relationships, meaning, achievement, but then vitality. It's taking care of the body as a pathway to flourishing. And there's a lot that we can do to take care of our body. We know the importance of sleep. We know the importance of physical activity. We know the importance of nutrition. We know the importance of touch. And touch is important for so many reasons. And obviously, we're in a world right now where touching is being limited. There are people who are socially distanced that have not been touched in a week or two or more. And there are our whole systems of, of havening and self-touch that we could apply just to tell the body like, I'm okay, we're okay, everything's okay. What we're doing today is using surfaces to push against to massage our own bodies. Now you can use your fingers, your fingers are great, your knuckles are great. And I'm gonna basically teach you how to from foot to head, 
treat your body and massage your body. And I'll tell you a little bit more about my background of what brought me to this work. So I did my master's in positive psychology in 2006, and at the same time did my first yoga teacher training. Um, Adrian, when, on your iPad, please turn off your camera unless you're gonna put the camera still because we see you and your hand moving around. Thank you. So. I did my first, I uh, did my, my master's in positive psychology in 2006, and at the same time did my yoga teacher certification. And this is where in positive psychology, I became passionate about the integration between the mind and body. While it was wonderful that we were doing all of these strategies to help people mentally flourish, I knew that the body was an important part of it that just wasn't present. And I became a yoga teacher while also being a coach and a motivational speaker. And I started running training programs in positive psychology. And as a yoga teacher and someone who's doing yoga a lot, I actually was getting injured a lot because the kind of yoga I was doing was very fluid, was very fast moving, and I had a very flexible body and would, would be able to kind of bendy, like I can even show you guys right now, I can still do a full back bend and touch my head to the floor and do all these kind of like weird things with my body. I was getting hurt all the time. And that's because what I was, was missing was that yoga requires a combination of balance of strength and flexibility. And so that brought me to many different styles of yoga. From vinyasa, I went to anusara, which treats yoga as medicine, yoga as therapy, and I got trained in yoga therapy. And then when I found Jill Miller and her work with Yoga Tune-Up, it really was the deepest therapeutic approach to yoga that I'd seen. And so if you're interested in what I'm doing, I'm giving you guys just a little teeny tiny bit because you guys are pent up and you need to take care of your, your tissue. And I'm gonna show you how, but the deeper, there's so much information on YouTube. My teacher has put out so many great videos, um, so many great things. And again, this is the Bible on self-care because this role model book basically teaches you different exercises for how to use your balls to roll out your body. And so I use this book constantly. If I have a headache, I'll flip to the back of the book and I'll find headaches and I will look at the recipe for how to massage the muscles along my neck and the back of my head to get rid of my headache like this. If my hamstrings are feeling, if I have hip pain, if I've been sitting for too long, I look up hip pain and I do the rolling exercises for my upper back and my lower back and my glutes and my hip pain goes away. I believe that everybody should learn how to take care of their connective tissue, but um, we're just never taught. So if you like this, if you're gonna feel good with this, just know that I hope that I'm just the doorway in, that you'll do these exercises. You, you know, your, the balls don't just roll, roll themselves. You actually have to use them um, and use your fingers, use your hands. So while I'm talking, I'm gonna invite you guys to start touching yourself. Pick a body part that you are just, that it's accessible to you. Maybe it's your feet, maybe it's your hands. Obviously you're a little distracted, uh, your arm, obviously you're a little distracted because you're talking to me, but multitask a little if it feels appropriate. Just notice like, you know, God gave you fingers and toes. I see two people, Jeffrey, you can massage your, your partner with your hands or you could use your toes, right? Toes can touch things too. My friends used to make fun of me. I used to pick things up with my feet. I'll show you guys, I'll demonstrate. I'll pick up my, my iPad holders. And they used to be like, Amelia, you're so weird. You pick things up with your feet. And it's like, actually, no, our feet used to be an extension of our hands. They used to articulate in lots of different ways. And so part of keeping our body healthy is actually using what we have available to us. Before we dive in, I'm gonna tell you what to expect. So I'm gonna teach you guys a little tiny bit about your connective tissue, your fascia, and why this is so important to be doing every single day, why it's important to stretch, why it's important to, be health, uh, to strengthen your muscles, why it's important to hydrate your tissues. Um, and then we're gonna start rolling together. We're gonna start with your feet, little by little, we're gonna work up to our head. My goal is to get us through in our, in our time together partially because my quarantined uh, roommate, my best friend, is teaching a Zumba class that I can't wait to join online at two o'clock Eastern Standard Time. And I'll send you guys the link as well. If you just want to go from massage into Zumba, you'll see me in the background. I'm excited to do it, but I need to make sure that she has bandwidth in order for which to do that. So we're going to be moving through the exercises and you can always re-reference this video. We'll send out the recording for you when you are done. So let's talk about your connective tissue. And when we talk about connective tissue, the word that we use, we use lots of different words to describe 
the same, the same type of connective tissue. You may or may not have heard of the word fascia, but fascia is the word that describes connective tissue. Our muscle, our blood, our bone, our ligaments, our tendons, they're all different forms of fascia. They're just differently packed fascia. You come across fascia all the time. Fascia, you guys are probably hearing a click. Let me take off this earring so that it doesn't keep clicking against my ear. My ear. Um, so fascia is the connective tissue that surrounds all of our organs. It encapsulates everything. So I'm just going to show you a quick PowerPoint, a set of PowerPoint slides. This is from our, our positive psychology training for our, our students, but just to sort of tell you what we're working with. So fascia is connective tissue. What you've seen this when you've looked at mo models of the body, all of this white that we see here is, is just all different types of connective tissue and muscle. When you pull the skin off of a chicken, that web of netting that you see, that's fascia, but the skin itself is actually one, bit, one form of fascia. Every muscle in your body is wrapped up in fascia and every single muscle fiber is wrapped in fascia and the myofibrils are wrapped in fascia as well. And so while we talk about the body having different muscles, there aren't really 600 different muscles. It's actually one long giant web from head to toe of muscle, of fascia. And there's another really great book. I think I took it with me. Yeah. If you're interested in learning about the fascial system, this is a really, really good introduction. It's a book that's called The Endless Web, Fascial Anatomy and Physical Reality. And so this is a really great introduction to your connective tissue. And so one of the best ways to think about uh, what is, like it's kind of hard for us to wrap our head around the concept that our body is just one big giant web of connective tissue. But when you think about it, at what point does the muscle become a tendon? And at what point does the tendon become bone? If you were to go microscopically deeper, 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 you wouldn't see, oh, that was muscle and now this is, bone. It just all fuses from one into the other as you get less of the, the muscular tissue and into the tendon. So our body is just one big giant connective web. And what happens when our connective tissue gets tight? So if, raise your hand if you've ever seen cotton candy be made. Anybody ever see cotton candy be made? Okay, cool. I have made more cotton candy in my life than I will ever have, want to have. I used to be, uh, when I, my first career started when I was 14 years old and lasted for uh, 12 years as a professional entertainer. And one of the things that I did every single summer when I entertained block parties was make cotton candy. So if you've seen cotton candy made, it's a big tub, the heat goes on and it starts to spin sugar and heat. And in the beginning, you just see little tiny webs, tiny little webbing of, of cotton candy. You guys know what I'm talking about, right? It looks like little spurs. And I'll, I'll go back to this so you can see what this looks like. It looks like this, right? It looks like just like a little thin web. And then as the cotton candy gets denser and denser and denser, it gets packed and packed and packed and packed until it gets something that's substantial, like cotton candy just pure sugar and it goes right into your bloodstream and, and, and activates your insulin response. So you don't want to have too much of it. Um, so that is what fascia is like. And so what you call a knot, so everyone start massaging your neck for me. If any part of that feels tender or sore, or sometimes it's like, oh, that's a little crunchy, crunch, 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 crunch. That feeling that you get is, or the feeling of a knot in our body. You don't actually have a knot in there. No one has tied something up inside of your tissue. Nobody, sometimes you're, I've, I've had some body work done. Um, I've had some body work done where the, the massage, I'm like, that person's got to be pushing on bone right there. They've got to be pushing on bone. It's like, no, it's not bone. It's densely packed fascia. And the reason that animals in the wild, cats and dogs, when you see them wake up in the morning, the first thing they do is they stretch and they stretch, right? That's what animals do. It's what they're actually doing. And you know that feeling you guys get? Shake your head if you know what I'm talking about, where you're kind of in the morning and it's like, it's a little tender, kind of like, ooh, things feel a little achy. 
That's because every night when you sleep, your body lays down more of that webbing. And when you wake up in the morning and you start to use your body and stretch and exercise and walk and reach and squat and move, you actually take that webbing that's not needed fascia and you break it up. But if you don't, it gets denser and denser and denser. And if you stay in this position and you type all day, the tissue here is getting tighter and tighter and tighter and tighter. So I wanna help you learn to take care of your connective tissue and understand that when you massage your body, when you squeeze your body, when you what we call palpate your tissue, you keep your connective tissue healthy. When our connective tissue gets too tight, too loose isn't good, but too tight, you get restrictions, you get, I'm sorry, you start with getting adhesions, meaning the tissues start to glue together. They don't work apart anymore. When a person has, and I'm going to just show you my back, when a person has frozen shoulder, a condition that many people end up getting where they have to get surgery for their back, the, fro the shoulder isn't frozen. What happens is, is this shoulder blade right over here, I'm showing you guys this bone of my body. You can see the bone move. The shoulder blade becomes stuck to the arm as opposed to being able to keep the shoulder blade still and move the arm separately. When our connective tissue gets stuck, it creates restrictions and it creates dysfunction over time. So you can learn to take care of your body simply by taking care of your connective tissue. If you palpate your body and something feels, ow, that hurts a little bit, it's a little sore. If it's tender, it needs massaging. That's one of the ways, that's one of the tests. Another test is actually called the pinch test. I'm not gonna talk, you, talk to you guys about the pinch test because it's a little, um, a little advanced, but right now the palpating your tissues is one of the tests. Okay, friends, are you ready to roll? Are you? I'm gonna unmute the lines just for a second. And if you're ready to roll, I want you to say yeah on the count of three. If you're ready to roll, say yeah. One, two, three. <laughs> Saul went, mm, I don't know. I didn't get a yeah out of you, Sal. You got a, I think so. All right, here we go, friends. You're going to take a ball, a can, anything that you have to work with. I'm going to lower my camera. I'm going to go onto this mat over here. And I'm going to invite you to take any surface that you have, a can, a ball, and you are going to put it underneath your foot. So I'm gonna, we're gonna do one foot at a time because you wanna be able to do the comparison test. So I'm gonna start on my left foot. Please join me just so you can be uh, telling the difference between your left and your right. Also, I'm gonna show you, if you haven't already gone to speaker view, please put it in speaker view. You can also pin my video so that you see my video more than everyone else's. Okay, so you see my feet. I'm starting with my left foot. I'm putting the ball underneath my foot and I'm gonna just keep my heel to the floor. I'll go sideways so you could see it. And all I'm doing is I'm just gonna start rocking forward and back and using the, massage, the foot to roll along the ball. Once you've done that for a little while, you can start to roll the foot forward and back, forward and back. And if you need that, you can hold on to balance uh, to a chair or to the wall for balance. You can also go side to side. So when you start to massage the bottom of your feet, you should know that all of the nerve endings of our body wind up in our hands and in our feet. And as you guys keep doing that, I'm just going to pull it up really quick so you could see a acupressure chart of the foot just so we could all know what we're talking about. So if you've ever seen an acupressure uh, chart that looks like this, oh, come on, I'll just screenshot, screen share, any one of these will do. You have seen that the in the Eastern medicine, they map all these different parts of your foot having to do with different organs. And that's because the nerves end at your foot. So as you're massaging your foot, and now you can go and put the ball of your, the top of your foot down and start to massage your heel. And getting into your heel, see if now you can just experiment with different angles. You can roll more. I encourage you to go slow. Don't go so fast like this, because then you're missing out on the opportunity to break up that fascia. 
if there's a part that is sore or tender with everything that we do, you do not want the pain to go higher than a six or a seven on a scale of zero to 10. Threes, fours, even fives, ooh, that's a tender spot. If it's tender, it needs love. If it creates a shooting pain and a pain that is um, uh, uh, that just very sharp and direct, don't push into that. That might be an indicator that you need to get something checked out. I was working with an acupuncture, um, acupuncturist once, uh, I'm sorry, a reflexologist once, and he was telling me about how he was working on a person's foot and he got a very tense, sensitive spot. And he said, you need to go to the doctor and get your kidneys checked. And what did you know? He was, he was at risk for, um, for disease, that so his foot was able to tell the practitioner before he was able to. And then last thing, see if you can curl your toes. Watch me, I'm curling my toes around the ball. I'm trying to spread my feet around the ball and or the can, because again, you could do this on a can as well. Here I am on the can. I'm just using the surface to massage my foot as best as I can. And if you can, try to pick up the ball. Try to pick it up with your feet, right? That's just a good exercise to do to get our toes spread. The health of your feet determines the health of your whole body because that will radiate up to your knees, your hips, and your whole body. So step off of the ball for a second and just pause and compare the foot that you just massaged from the other foot and notice how they feel differently. I'm just gonna unmute the lines really quick. You guys don't have to move from where you are. If you notice the difference, yeah. Yeah. Yes. 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 Good, good. Most people, if I say, give me words to describe it, you can start switching to the other foot now, start going to the other foot. Most people will say that they feel a lot more energy going through the foot they just massaged. They'll describe it as feeling flatter. They'll describe the foot that just got massaged as feeling more, um, more open. They'll, uh, and they can feel that it's just more weighted. And that's what we did for about a minute or two. The great thing about this is you can take the balls and you can put them, you can uh, work with them under your desk if you're sitting at the computer. But I find standing gives me a lot more of an opportunity to actually apply pressure to my feet. So again, my heel is down, I'm rolling around. Now put the ball of your foot down and start to get into your heels. Beautiful. Another thing I love about doing this work is that you actually don't even need me. When I give our students a set of these massage balls for them to play with, I say, just start doing whatever feels good. Start experimenting with whatever feels good. And that alone gives them this freedom to start letting their body guide them in the process. Beautiful. So keep going. Keep going just a little bit longer. Play around with, can you grip the ball? Can you pick the ball up with your feet? Get the muscles of your feet to get engaged. Try to get your toes spread. If your feet cramp, um, probably means you need a little more magnesium, a little bit more water, um, and you need to practice stretching your feet and doing these exercises. If you find a tender spot, tender spots, the way you deal with them is you push down gently and you release. You push down gently and you release again, whether you're on a tennis ball or on a ball, on a soup can or on a, um, on a vitamin jar, either one you could do. For a moment, take a seat. Notice that both feet feel a little different. You're gonna take your two thumbs, you're gonna put them to the center of your ankle. Your muscles, your bones of your feet, every single toe has like your hands, different, um, different little lines. So there's five little bones you can follow. So just really quick, use your thumbs to track your muscles and you're just pushing down. Now, if I knew that coronavirus was gonna happen, I would have gotten a pedicure. So I apologize that I wasn't prepared for an, a pandemic in the planet. I don't have a pedicure on my toes as I do this. Hopefully you don't either, we're in it together. And then just one down the center of your foot, you're just pushing down and you're pressing. And again, go to the other side. If this is tender, it means you need more of it. Tenderness means you need more of it. So you're going to keep pushing down and 
any point you use your hands to massage your feet as hard as you can it's great for your feet if no one's around you massage them for you the feet make up the foundation of the rest of your body's alignment one more really thing great thing to do with your feet is you hold your foot up you take your fingers put each of your five fingers between your five toes and just wedge them in there and massage it a little bit side to side like this do the other foot as well. This helps you with rotation for your ankles and even just getting your fingers in there. If you can't get your fingers between your toes, it means you need this. You need to get your toes spread. And while my hands are like this, I'm just gripping and releasing as a way of massaging my own foot. Having a pencil or a pen nearby is also really great because you can actually use, I'm going to get a little bit close up so you guys could see this again. I apologize that my feet are not in the prettiest of conditions, but you can, you can take a pencil and actually roll up and down the insides of your toes and oh, does that feel good? Try it between the other toes, just rolling up and down. This is like a foam roller for your toes right in between each of the toes oof that hurts and feels so good so it's a little little bit of a trick so if you don't have anything else around i'm just using one one hand you need a little core strength to do what i'm doing holding up your foot and do it with one hand one side and then again you do it with the other you're just rolling up and down this was something that was taught to me by a capster named mary casas so shout out to mary thank you for teaching me how to use that you can even put it between and squeeze and that's a nice little massage as well that you're getting in between your toes. So again, I'm putting it in and I'm just going up and down, up and down, up and down. Okay. So cool trick. Thanks, Carrie. All right. So from our feet, we are moving on to these calves of ours. So we call them calves because there's two muscles. So first thing you could do is you can just take your hands and you're going to do what's called bifurcate your calves. So your fingers are coming together. A lot of you look like you're just watching me do it. I'm gonna call you out on it. Kanta, are you doing this? Or are you just spectating? I need you to do this with me. Come on, get in the game. Not a spectator sport. Okay, so you're bifurcating your calves, which means you're putting your fingers onto the place where these two muscles would connect, which is right here, and you're spreading and spreading and spreading and spreading and what I'm doing with my hands is I'm going like this. I'm squeezing and squeezing and squeezing. Really good to do with your calves. Yeah, just like that. For our calf muscles, I'm only gonna, um, I'm gonna invite you guys to take the ball and this one's gonna be a little tricky. Some of you might have knee injuries where being on your hands and knees is a little restricted for you. If it's not restricted for you, what you're gonna do is I'm gonna show you the full version first, and then I'm going to give uh, options for people who have restrictions. If you have a ball or a tennis ball, I'll use the tennis ball, which is a nice contrast to the color. I'm putting the tennis ball, not all the way into my, my knee crease, but a little bit lower. And what I'm doing with my hands and knees is I'm just gonna, sit back very gently and then rock forward and back very gently with more and more pressure each time letting the ball massage my calves then little by little i'm going to roll it down roll it down roll it down and i'm just going to play like that if you have two balls you can put one under one one under the other and whoo this feels really good and it's very it can be very tender especially if when under non-coronavirus circumstances you wear high heels we call this exercise the anti-high heel if being on your knees is a restriction for you those of you who are doing it keep going you are getting a massage for both your hamstrings and your calf muscles you just keep rolling down and down and you keep going if this is a if this is um, restricted for you it can't be on your knees you can put a ball underneath and just go like this. You can sit on the floor, sit on, on a chair and just put the ball between you and your leg and just go like this. Or again, use your thumbs and just massage this tissue. Even just pinching the tissue can feel really, really, really good. When I pinch like this, I'm separating out the tissue of my calves from the tissue 
of my bone, right? So that's leading up into the bone. So that's how you massage your calf muscles with the ball and how you massage your hamstrings. Very, very little, um, there's very little threat to using balls for self-massage in terms of damaging connective tissue, except in two circumstances. And I wanna just show you that right now so we can all be really mindful together. One is you never wanna massage your, your hamstrings with your legs out straight. So I don't wanna do this with, this with the ball because when my leg is out straight, that puts your ligaments at risk. So if you decide that you want to sit on a surface, let's say this is me sitting up on a chair, I'm gonna use my, my blocks. Let's say this is me sitting on a chair. I, I can sit on a chair and put with my knee bent a ball underneath my thighs and I could massage it that way. But you don't wanna massage your hamstrings with your leg extended. And that's why I like doing the ball underneath my calves because then I get the hamstring and the calf at the same time. The other one we're gonna talk about when we get to our back, which is you don't wanna massage directly on your spine. You wanna to go to either side of the spine. You don't want to put the muscle, you don't wanna press onto bone. All right, up next, we are going to move from our calves and the back of our legs to the side of our legs. For many people, the IT band is a place that gets really, really, really tight. The IT band inserts and help into both our knee and into our hip. And so we want to get it massaged, especially if you are a runner, you're trying to keep your cardio up while you're, while you're quarantined. You want to be really mindful of this. The easiest way for those of you who have very tight IT bands to do this is just to sit in a position where you're on the floor. I like one foot behind me like this, the other foot in front of me. The lightest amount of pressure you can do here is you put the ball onto, let's say, um, somewhere of your IT band. If my pants had stripes going down it, the stripes match up to the position of that IT band. So you're going to put the ball down and you just do this position where you use your hand to push and push, and I slide the ball little by little up my IT band. This is really nice because it's actually, it's very hard to massage your IT band in the same way. If you have more flexibility, you're gonna follow me by going down on the floor, you're gonna put one foot as a kickstand and the other hand is gonna be my support. I lift my hips and I put the ball underneath, right on that IT band right here, and then I'm gonna use, notice my foot is flexed, I'm gonna use my back leg to chug and move the ball all along the length of my IT band. Because I do this often, I can actually even put two balls and massage with both balls along the IT band. So whichever option you can take right now, try that with me. You're rolling around on the floor, and you're trying to get as close to that knee as possible. You don't wanna put the balls onto your knee, onto your actual bones, and just try that. For many people, this is very, very, very tender. And for me, it's most tender when I get next to my knee. Good, all right, come on up, try the other side. Everything you do to one, you wanna to do to the other, but it's nice to just pause and notice the difference from one to the other before you go on to the other side. So we're gonna go back, gonna put the ball underneath our T band, one ball or two, I recommend starting with one. My foot is kickstanding, I'm on my elbow. So as you guys are doing this, I wanna to talk to you about some of the um, errors I sometimes see with this position. Sometimes people are actually on their, on their hamstrings like this, Hey, if that feels good and you wanna do that, great, but your leg is not fully extended, you're not down on the floor, so you can't really do that much damage. Sometimes they're too far forward on their quad, which is also okay, because if it feels good, just do it. But you do wanna get that IT band, which is this whole web of connective tissue along the whole side of your body. And again, you can do more or less pressure by adding in another ball. And I'm using my elbow to control the sensation. Beautiful friends. Make sure you're breathing. Okay, from there, I'm going to show you um, how to, with 
getting onto the quadriceps, which are these muscles in the front, quad meaning four, there are four muscles that go along the front of your body. And so this one's actually really nice to have a block under you to do, and you can use books. You could use, for some reason I was gonna say, you could use the yellow pages. Who's got yellow pages? <laughs> but any kind of like thick book that you have, you're gonna put the ball onto that and you're just gonna lay your body down. And so it's almost like I'm in a forearm plank and I can have the opposite knee down. And I'm just going to use my arms to, and you have to be mindful because you could roll over, to just massage the front. If you don't have a block, you could do this by laying down as well. It's just a little bit harder to move. So if you have the core strength, you could do that. But I find that it's actually easier to do that for your um, quadriceps on an elevated surface. So quadriceps, let's talk about this hip flexor. So a hip flexor um, in biomechanics and physiology, we talk about extension or flexion. All of our body is made up of opposites. And when our opposites are in balance, our body is in balance. But when my chest muscles are too strong and my back muscles are weak, my body gets pulled forward and I hunch. So what do I need to do to get my body out of this position? I need to strengthen my back muscles and stretch my chest muscles because our body is made up of opposites. Our hip flexors, this is my hips when they're in a neutral position, the muscles of our hip flexors bring our legs flexion, which is a bent position, or our hip flexor muscles go into extension, which is pulling us back, which I need a little balance for. Most of us, if we are sitting, we are over tightening this muscle. So if I sit in a chair all day, while you think that you're in a neutral position because your body weight is being supported by the ground, what's happening is these muscles that do this thing called hip flexion are basically contracted the whole time. So if you sit for too long, eek, those muscles are overdone, which means you have to stretch very often if you are sitting. There are ways that you can stretch while you are sitting just by standing, right? But standing is not, flex, is not stretching this muscle. It is just getting it out of the flex position to neutral. So just every once in a while standing and taking a position where one foot is back, you can have your heel lifted off the ground. And just to come into this lunging position, for some people, this is enough of a stretch. And then you could use your heel, you can hold onto a chair or the wall, you can use your heel to pulse, or you can bring your knee to the floor and do a lunge position. But first I wanna pull my legs in and then allow myself to stretch. So I'm stretching this muscle, I'm allowing my hips to come forward while I'm stretching the front over here, right? This is a hip flexor stretch for this position. And then of course, everything you do to one side, you wanna to do to the other. So I'm stretching my hip flexor, not just by flaying forward, but I actually wanna pull my muscles in first and then I allow myself to stretch this muscle. It's also nice every once in a while to stretch the quadriceps because again, these muscles are needing to activate and squeeze. You can hold onto a chair or the wall and hold onto your foot and squeeze, trying to keep your knee in alignment and stretch out this muscle. So when I'm sitting, I firstly just try not to sit too much at the computer. I try to stand as much as possible. I try to stand, walk, sit, vary my movements, squat if I can, anything I can do to vary my movements. But very often you'll see me just standing there, stretching, stretching out this muscle, car rides. Very important to take care of these muscles here because what happens is, is our muscles insert into our bones. And so when those muscles are tightening, remember they're lifting bones. But when they're constantly over tightening, they will also throw your bones out of alignment. It'll actually take your, your pelvis, your pelvis, and put your pelvis in a position that's not good for your lower back. It'll throw your knees off and actually can cause knee pain and actually cause ligaments to tear or meniscuses to tear. Keeping your connective tissue healthy is going to prevent that. 
All right, we're going on to our hips. So we stretch the front of our hip flexors. Now let's go on to the back. I'm going to do this by laying on my back. I'm also going to show you an alternative for standing up against the wall. So first one is going to be the way, the best way I find to do this, which is against the floor so I can give gravity away. So you're going to do one side at a time with your ball. I'm going to use the brighter ball for contrast a little bit here. So I'm going to put the ball and I'm going to lay in a moment in a way that I'm going to rock my hips from side to side and the ball is going to roll all over this muscle of my body, my gluteus maximus, this big muscle, and also the gluteus medius, which is this thinner muscle that goes across the top. It's a little bit smaller. So the way that I do that, and I want to do one side test and then the other, is I lay on my back. Just a bit lower. I lay on my back and I press my feet into the ground. I lift my butt. I position my ball underneath my hip. And then with my pelvis, I push down. And all I do is I just chug my hips side to side, just like this. And as I do this, I am massaging the connective tissue. I'm going to show you a few positions that you can play with here that I really like. And then I'm going to show you how to do this up against the wall. I used to be notorious for doing this in an airport up against the wall. Um, I won't be doing that for a while, but you can you can get yourself ready. It's kind of like post-coronavirus visualization. One day I'll get to use my balls in an airport again, probably with a mask on my face. Okay, so here are the options. So one is you're chugging just side to side. You're, you're, you're uh, just wagging your tail. Boom, 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 boom. And every once in a while you find it, you can reposition the ball, you find a tender spot and it's like, oh, and you hold, you push your body down into the ground and you massage it. Other options, you go side to side with your leg. You're just butterflying your leg, windshield wiper in your leg side to side. You can also straighten the leg and take it down. And this is really nice as well, just being able to have the leg be straight and move it around. But primarily I'm just feeling for whatever feels good. And then of course you take it to the other side and you want to keep it balanced. And you'll feel that when you put your hips back down on the floor, one will have so much more opening and space. Against the wall, it is a very similar type of positioning. Here's my suitcase. But um, you're just going to, let me do that, see if we can catch ourselves. So you're going to stand up against the wall. I'm going to stand, I'm going to put the ball between myself and the wall. Right now, the ball is on my butt. And I'm going to just bend my knees and I'm going to do that by wagging my hips side to side, up and down by squatting. And you can do this while you're in a Zoom meeting, just pointed and just, you know, people might not even know. They just think that you're just sort of wagging side to side. And I see some of you are doing it on the floor, which is great. Keep going, friends. You guys are doing awesome. Yep. So some of you are already on your back, which is, uh, give me a second, I'll get there. And so again, you're doing it on the other side. Beautiful. So especially when you start to, um, your people's, when you think about it and keep going everyone, if you're massaging it, you're massaging. When we sit a lot, our blood flow is not flowing to our glutes. Those muscles are not being activated. Glute health is very important for back health. So you really wanna make sure that you're using those balls, you're using the wall to be able to do this. All right, um, we're gonna go to our back. Before we go to our back, I just wanna say something that I think is one of the most brilliant applications of yoga tune-up, um, which is a lot of people have inflammation in their gut. A lot of people have tightness in their, in their muscles that is actually, um, it's not that they don't have good core strength, it's that their core is too tight. This is my dog, Dora, by the way. Hi, Dora, do we wanna be a part of the demo? No, you just think it's a good idea to sit on mommy's mat while she's working. I know, I know. Say hi to the people. Hello, hello. Say, I don't need yoga tuna because I know how to stretch my body. Yes. Okay, sorry, distraction. So um, Jill Miller has something called the gorgeous ball. And the gorgeous ball is, you don't want to do this with a beach ball. You really want to use this ball because it's very specific. Uh, it's like the word courageous, but it's the word core gorgeous. And this is an incredible thing to do to actually massage your organs inside of your body. So if our connective tissue is tight here, it impacts our ability to use our ab muscles appropriately, 
but it also impacts the health of our organs. And so and, um, most of you guys don't have this. I just want to show you what's possible. If you are somebody who tends to have um, just, again, inflammation in your belly, maybe some leaky gut, you actually just lay on the ball and you just breathe and you let the ball sort of sink in and you could do a little bit of rolling side to side and the ball is just it's super therapeutic and it's something about the shape and thickness of this ball that's particularly special about this so couldn't not give a shout out to my gorgeous ball okay we're going on to our back so our back muscles Again, we're gonna just basically do the same thing. I'm gonna skip the lower back because you guys can do that on your own. Um, but basically saying, same thing as before, you don't wanna go onto your spine. You wanna be staying on the muscle tissue that's on either side of your back up and down. Um, and so I do one side and then I go to the other side. And it's the same thing that you were doing with the ball. Sorry, tipping down. It's the same thing you were doing, except you're going a little bit higher. This time you're going forward and back. Again, you could wag your hips side to side and you're able to walk up and walk, 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 and just keep massaging your back, which feels great. Some of my other favorite places to take this ball is to massage the shoulders. So most of us, if you get a massage, Oftentimes your massage therapist is gonna spend a lot of time massaging your back muscles. Our trapezius muscle is a muscle that inserts into our neck and it's a big wide muscle that goes all the way down like a big sheet of muscle down our back. It's great to get a ball and put it underneath your shoulder and to roll. So I just wanna show you the positioning. So there's a bone here. And one of the best ways to get the ball in the right place is you just take your, your ball in your hand, lift up your shoulder, and it's basically positioned in a way that the ball just hits right there. And so I'm gonna lay down, I'm gonna put the ball in this position somewhere around here. And I'm gonna show you some positions to explore when we get off the call. So let's see. Okay, so you lay down. My butt's gonna stay on the floor for a second. I'm gonna position the ball underneath me. I'm gonna wiggle myself to find where that good position is. And then I'm going to use my legs. I'm gonna lift my hips and I'm just gonna chug. I'm pushing my heels into the ground to go forward and back as I, whew, this feels so tender. Oh my goodness. Um, I clearly need more of this myself. Part of the reason I'm offering this webinar is so I could do this myself too. <laughs> um, so here I am, I'm using my, sh my legs to push forward and back. Other fun things you can do when you're in this position, you can take your hand into a cactus arm, just like this, right, like this. And that position's really nice to get into the shoulders. You can also stretch your arm up over your head you can wag your hips side to side. And again, you just let your body tell you what feels good. If you were using something like a can for this, again, you can still do the same rolling. You just want to, you don't want to put too much pressure onto the bones. So I'm basically playing around with how much I'm lifting my hips as to how much resistance I'm going to get. And as you do this, you can then go higher and higher up on your shoulders, lifting your hips to go up as high as you would like. As I said before, you can do one side and then you go over to the other side. You place the ball, you lift your hips, and you start to chug. This is a great thing you can do, just kind of hanging out, watching TV on the floor. Same thing as we did up against the wall with the ball under our hips, we can do it underneath our shoulders. Again, cactus arm, take it around, take it across. The key is you're going really slow and you're using your breath. <sighs> Breathing into what you're feeling. It's also important after you roll to, um, to use your, to drink lots of water because what we're doing is we are squeezing the tissue. As we're doing this work, we're massaging our tissue. And so you want to be able to rehydrate the tissue afterwards. Okay, let's talk about the tops of the shoulders. So you can get the ball rolling on the top of the shoulders. I sometimes uh, use this ball to um, roll this way. 
I'm not going to demonstrate the one for the shoulder. I'm just going to tell you about it because it would just require changing my camera angle too much. But the way to get into here is actually to put the, go into the, um, the wall in between the door frame and you put the ball here. And let's say my head is where the walkway is of the door and I get into a lunge position and I actually pin the ball right here and I roll my shoulders. I'm also gonna show you some of the gadgets that I use, and then we're gonna to go to the chest, the neck, and the head, and the fingers. But um, I found this relatively inexpensive on Amazon. Obviously, things are a little shorter on Amazon right now in terms of how long it takes, or maybe everybody has flooded to get this. But this is a neck massaging thing that has actually been really awesome. So it's a, I'll send you guys links with this when we send out the recording. But basically, you put your arms in here, and then you can control these little balls that roll around. And so this is a nifty little massage device. You can put it on. It also has, and then it kind of warms up and it uses these balls to massage your shoulders. Um, so if you wanna play around with getting some gadgets, um, this is one other gadgets that I have for self-massage. The Theragun is very loud. I'm gonna just show you guys the warning. It's gonna be loud, one, two, three. But it's, um, it's a percussor that you can use in the meaty parts, but other massage tools like this one, this is a pure wave, is not as loud. And again, can be a nice tool to use onto your arms, um, just to kind of give you ideas on toys. But going back to the balls, I actually don't really use the balls on my arms. I find that on my arms and my shoulders, my hands really are just the best. Nothing really beats your hands. We do wanna take a look at exercises for our hands and our wrists right now because many of us are on our computers and many of us are typing. The muscle that you need to take care of, hello Dora, the muscle that you need to take care of that supports your typing, 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 is this muscle right over here across the top. You guys should see what this dog is doing. Look at this. She's like, hi, what, me? Okay. Um, so one of the best ways to massage this muscle, this muscle, if you can just watch it, fire is, in, well, you can't really see, you have to feel it, the muscle that I use when I'm typing. So you use your thumb and you grab your arm and you use your thumb to just massage this muscle right here. Oftentimes, if your wrists start to hurt, just massaging this muscle right at the top over here can really help. I like to do things where I push down on the muscle I pin it and then I just wiggle the bone. I rotate my fingers side to side and you'll feel it. It's like, whew, super tender from all the typing. Hello, Dora. Okay, and then you just play around with it on one side and you play around with it on another. Obviously, all of the good arm stretches are really good to do. And a lot of what happens when we start to um, uh, type on the computer a lot is these muscles get over tightened. So a back stretch every once in a while, interlacing your fingers, stretching your shoulders back to open up your chest muscles is really important. You can also do a lot of nice stuff to stretch the neck muscles. So we did our wrists, let's actually do our hands and then we'll go to the neck. So the hands, one, you can use your pencil to massage your fingers, or you put your own fingers in and you wanna take off your jewelry, I'll take off my aura ring, and you just interlace your fingers and you squeeze. Squeeze, 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 feels really good. You guys keep squeezing, you can use your thumbs to massage your hands. I also have a different set of balls from the melt method that are also really nice for um, this. This is called their hand and foot kit. And they make little balls that are like this. And you can actually massage between your fingers. You can probably find a marble or other things to put between your fingers, but squeezing the smaller balls between your fingers and toes is really, really nice right here. And you can also massage your hands and your wrists. Let's say this is my table or my desk where my computer is. You can just massage the ball underneath your palm, forward and back. Yeah, just like this. And then our neck, you can stretch your neck muscles by interlacing your hands behind you. The same side my hands are on is the same side my head is gonna tilt to. 
and you just stretch your neck muscles side to side. That gets these scalene muscles right here, which are really nice to stretch into. And the other side, I'm speeding up a little bit because I want to get to our jaw and the crown of our head. Beautiful. The jaw is a muscle that gets really tight for us, especially during times of high stress. Many people will, will grip their jaw. So using the balls to massage your face is a really great idea. You can massage just by rolling the ball across your face. And you can actually push the ball into your muscle, into your, your uh, masseter right here. And you just press the ball gently and then you stretch your mouth very slowly like that. Or you press on the muscle with your own palms and you stretch your mouth like that. There's the good old fashioned head rub, just pushing your hands into your head as hard as you can. Because guess what? Your skull is made up of bones that are fused together and those fusions can get really tender. And so you use your thumbs to massage the feet. I'm sorry, <laughs> use your hands to massage your scalp. And if you are blessed to be a bald, bald headed person, you actually could roll on the floor and actually use the ball on your hair with someone like me that has on your head without hair, but it gets a little tricky when you have hair but these are some muscles uh, that can feel really nice is just pressing into your head because again, just looking down at the computer all day can start to create tensions in the back of your scalp. Okay, friends, that is Amelia's head to toe, roll on anything you can get yourself rolling on, self-care. Um, I am going to drop a couple of things into the chat box to give you guys a little bit more information. Um, one, I mentioned to you that I am going to go do something super fun right now that if you are interested in, you could come join us as we have a free Zumba class. Oh, hold on just one second. Let me see if I can, oh, I don't even have the, the room number. Hold on a second. My friend is teaching Zumba and I am going to ask her to send me the room number. If she can get that in time, I'll send you guys the link for it. Need room number for the class, please. Okay, I'm gonna drop that into the chat box. And also, if you guys have not seen, um, we are doing a, I'm doing a program starting Saturday called Better, Better Than Before. It's a 30 day Corona challenge where I'm gonna be doing a one hour class every day for the next 30 days starting Saturday um, to help people in our community um, basically not go crazy while they're being quarantined um, and actually bring our community together to have people um, learn about how to take good care of their body, connect in community, and actually create a vision for themselves of what it would look like to take such good care of ourselves while we are under the circumstance that we wind up better than before. So I'll send you guys email an email about that, but if you wanna check out the program, um, it's just $30 for 30 days. And if that's even a stretch for you guys right now, we have scholarships available where we're giving it away entirely for free if people can't afford the $30 for the 30 days. But it's basically 30 hours of live class time with me and we'll also have an online Facebook community. So if you're starting to feel like your mental and your physical health is already declining and you want some support, um, check out our Better Than Before program. And um, Linda says she hopes this makes her feel taller. Linda, you might need to do some inversions for that. Um, thank you guys so much. I'm going to unmute the lines, invite you guys to give yourself some snaps. I hope you've gotten some ideas, some tricks. Um, I'll send lots of links and resources out when I send this. Um, I'll send you the links for some of my toys. And um, hopefully if you guys, uh, if you start massaging yourself, shoot me a message. Let me know how you're feeling. It'd be really great to hear from you guys that you're putting these things into practice. And if you're not quarantined by yourself and you've got somebody around, even if you've never had any background in massage, offer your loved one a shoulder rub, offer them a hand, a, a, a hand massage, offer them a foot massage, knowing that when you're massaging your feet, you're massaging your whole body. If you take nothing away from this than just hands on your own feet, people, you will start to feel physically better because you can take good care of yourself. I love and appreciate you all, and we'll talk to you all soon. Bye, everybody. Bye. 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 Bye.